a train in sight yet. Kind of glad. I don't think I could stand all that noise. There must have been something wrong with that whiskey they served back in town. I never heard of a three-day hangover before. Well, I got one. Anyway, we might be better off if Mr. Favor ain't in on that train. I begin to think maybe he got held up in Philadelphia by something or another. Always said Mr. Favor's one trail boss with brains. Is that what you always said? Maybe decide to stay in Philadelphia. Now he gotta, he's gotta come out here. He's gotta get the cattle money. Back to the ranchers in San Antonio. About money, uh, Rowdy, I, I know what I did with all my money, and uh, I know what happened to Joe's, but what did you do with yours? Uh, <sighs> see, I had a few drinks, and then I got into that card game at the Bonton Saloon. There's where my horse went. Mine, too. Uh, yeah, that's right. You were there, weren't you? That sure was a good horse you used to have. Well, that was before I met the girl from Glen Falls, New York. I don't remember hearing about an old girl from Glen Falls, New York. You know, that's funny. I've been thinking about her. I have a feeling Glen Falls never heard of her, either. Glen Falls, New York is a long way from the city of Missouri. I guess the train fare kind of cleaned you out, huh? I hope Mr. Favor's on this train. You know what's a funny thing? There ain't a drover born that don't draw every other breath on the trail of cussing the day he become one. You take him off the trail now. I'm hungry. Well, now that's what I mean. You're pushing cattle north. There ain't no whiskey to drink. There ain't no pretty girls to look at. There's nothing but bees and dust. Sure do get fed regulars. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of hungry. We thought, being you had the chuck wagon here. Well, are you planning on eating it? Because I'm planning on eating the saddles and all that gear. It's all we got in there. I wonder what it's going to taste like. You, you mean you don't have any food in the wagon at all? I'm lucky I got the wagon. Almost afraid to ask. Oh, I ain't ashamed to tell you. It was a couple, three nights ago, I wandered into one of those saloons in town. Oh, purely by accident, I was looking for a glass of milk. Anyway, I don't remember much, but there was this woman who'd original come from Glen Falls, New York. Oh. Both horses wish. Well, she was ailing pretty bad. Sure is a beautiful looking train. You bet. If it has Mr. Favor aboard. Well, if Mr. Favor is aboard, we don't want to bother him with our troubles, do we? No, 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 sir. He'll be pretty tired traveling all that way from Philadelphia. Good to see you, boss. Uh, we got the rest of your stuff on the chuck wagon. It was good to see you, boy. Good to see you. You're looking great. Real great. So do all of you. Matter of fact, I'm 
seen you look like you look. Yeah, that's better. Hey, how come so many of you down here? I thought you'd still be busy in town. Well, we kind of finished up our business in there. Yeah, yeah, sure did. <laughs> train like that. Comfortable enough to sleep in, I'll bet. Oh, say, I hope one of you remembered to bring an extra horse along for me. Oh, I forgot. Of course, I can ride into town in the chuck wagon. Can't I? You sure can, boss. You can ride anywhere the chuck wagon's going. Only thing it is, it ain't going anywhere. I would have gladly brought you along a horse, boss. But I don't seem to have one either. Us neither. Well, how are you ever expecting to get to San Antonio? You're going to hire us on again, ain't you? Well, I was thinking about it. But... Well, it's, you know, we can pick up horses in this country. That's easy. No trouble getting rid of one either, especially in this part of the country, huh? I don't see how you can think. You're right, boss. It is easy to get rid of them. Every one of them? Boss, don't ask any questions. We wouldn't want to lie to you, and you wouldn't want to hear the truth. Fair enough. That leaves five of us on foot in the middle of Missouri. Hey, well, well, you're going to hire us on again. Maybe you could advance us some money, and we'd go back into town and buy them back. The only money I got is from the sale of the herd, and every penny of that's got to get to the owners in San Antonio. I don't even have enough money to buy a horse myself. You too? I mean, Glen Falls, New York, isn't that far from Philadelphia? Forget I said anything. Well, it's going to be a long walk back to Texas. And we ain't used to walking. I don't mind the walk so much, but who's going to haul the chuck wagon? That's easy. The chuck wagon stays here. Oh, no. I lost my money and I lost both my horses, but one thing I ain't going to lose is that chuck wagon. I was dreaming. See what you mean. Them ain't gophers. Those are horses. Horses? Oh, yeah, horses. Must be 40 or 50 of them. Must be. We only need six. So we'd need. Maybe we could buy six or so. Without any money? Well, there's more than one way of getting a horse. Scarlet, give me a big gun belt. Sure, boss. Oh, wait a minute, boss. We need horses. Talking won't get you any. I ain't gonna let him do it. I guess he's doing it for us, boys. I know that. You can't stop him once he's made up his mind. Well, that being the case, the least we can do is help him. Nice lot of horses you got there. They ain't bad. How many? Forty-eight. Uh -huh. They all in good shape? They sure are. We'll uh, take those horses now. And don't give us any trouble. We've been drinking, have they? Hey, ain't you forgetting something? Well, there were supposed to be 50 horses, but only 48 were delivered. 
Keep your hands right where they are. Don't make a move, neither of you. I'll take some money along with the horses. Oh, oh. Boss, horse deal is one thing. Sure, we can use the money, but taking it off the same Jasper as we take the horses off of don't seem right. I'll decide what's right. Let's have the money. Sure. If you don't mind, Mr. Favor, we have rather a tight schedule. We'll be moving along now. All right, get moving, both of you. Quinn, Scarlett, come on up here and help unload these horses. like that, they'll be back in no time with armed men. Why? Because you didn't have your face covered, that's why. Well, that's what they always do, isn't it? Come back with armed men? What for? Oh, boss, you've been in Philadelphia too long. You're out here now. All you got to do out here is whistle and you got a posse, and this time with railroad bulls. Just because I bought some horses? Bought? What? Oh, I, I know you were kidding all the time. <laughs> Did you? No. Oh, well, I sure am relieved to know that you're not a horse thief or a train robber. For a while there, I thought I was. Well, I'm glad to know if I ever want to steal a horse or rob a train here behind me. Oh, I bought 50 horses and they only came up with 48. That's the reason the conductor had some money for me. Now, let's get that chuck wagon into town and get some supplies, uh, if we need any. Well. It isn't that I need them, but my stomach sure does. Here's my horse, and your horse is too, Wishbone. My team? Oh, where'd they come from? Well, let's quit standing around and get them watered. <laughs> now do your horses here. How did you know we were gonna need horses? Oh, a lot cheaper in Sedalia than San Antonio. More in demand down there. And here's yours, Mr. Favor. Why, yeah. There's my horse. Ah, oh, so that's how you knew, huh? That's how I knew. Well, those horses, that Lucinda, she was a busy girl. Huh? Lucinda, that's a girl like you.
think you're doing? Those are dish towels. They don't grow on trees. I've been thinking. You didn't offer to mention, but where the heck's Pete? I don't know. He went to Philadelphia with you, didn't he? <laughs> Last time I saw Pete, he said he never scout for me again. Well, that's bad news. Pete's a fairly good scout. That he is. What are you going to use for a scout when we start up north from San Antonio again? Pete, of course. One of these days you're going to say something like that and it isn't going to come true. Say, so you ain't casting no shadow. I'm a full-grown American citizen. I cast just as big a shadow as anybody else. Sometimes a little shorter. I'm talking about Mushy. Oh, him. Well, he's up to Orangeville. We'll be passing by there tomorrow. Why Orangeville? Uh, he heard about a school teacher up there. I thought it was about time he learned to read. Yeah, that's good. I don't know about that. I mean, I'm thinking about the teacher. If he wasn't a drinking man before Mushy come along, I'll bet he is now. Hey, something's bothering those horses. <laughs> you just gotta go look after him. Let <laughs> hot it up for you. Uh, gonna stop in Orangeville tomorrow? I don't think so. Somebody ought to rescue that teacher from Mushy. Why? You miss Mushy? You must be out of your mind. Why would I miss that overgrown, brainless... Uh, yeah, I kind of do. Just some stray. We tied him up. Yeah, he was just lost and lost. Hey, why don't you go into town, take the stray, give him to the sheriff, pick up Mushy at the same time? That's the horse. Black, three white stockings. Boss in this outfit. That'd be me. My name's Wilson, Sheriff of Orangeville. Howdy. My name's Favor. Get your horse. Why? You're coming with us. Get his gun, Chandler. Hey, hold on a minute. What's this all about? You're under arrest. Charge his horse stealing. Look, I got a bill of sale for every one of those horses. Including that black horse with the three white stockings? Uh, well, no, but he's a stray. That's the only one you're accused of stealing. Mr. Favor didn't steal that horse. Look, he just wandered into our camp. The only reason we tied that horse up was bothering ours. You'll have your chance to testify. There'll be a hearing. Go ahead, Chandler. Take his gun. You let him get away with this? Well, they ain't gonna run with a man holding a gun on me. Look, you might as well all stay here until I... Then when's the hearing gonna be? Pretty quick. We don't waste too much time on horse thieves. Why don't you try taking off your badge and saying that, huh? Let's move out. You hold it till I get back. I'll hold it. Otis, ride on out to Cronin's ranch and tell him we got his horse. Right, Sheriff. going to arrest someone. I just wanted to make sure. I arrested my man. Will you empty your pockets, please? You're wearing your blue dress. Yes. Is that all? That's it. What do you want me to do with the car, Sheriff? Stable him in the barn with Cronin's. Look, I want that in a good, safe place. It will be. 
Is uh, Cronin the man who reported his horse stolen? That's right. When? Last night. And how come you came to us first thing this morning? Chandler's brought in, and he's a good tracker. Look, I'm a trail boss. My papers will show that. I just bought a herd of 48 horses. Now, why would I steal one? No idea. I pushed a herd of 3,000 head to Sedalia. I'm taking the money from the sale back to the owners in San Antonio. Now, why would I take a chance on stealing one horse? I don't know, Mr. Favor. I don't know. Look, I'm not a judge. A horse was reported stolen. I found that horse in your possession. You'll have your chance to explain how it got there. You coming home tonight, Tom? Depends on Cronin. If he don't show up, I'll stay here overnight. Well, I've got to get back to the house. Chickens have to be fed. Go on back, then. Tom. Yes? Please be careful. I will. Town. Well, a good strong wind would blow it over. There, that jail. Yeah? Any small sized boy could push it over without no trouble at all. Yeah, well, you're liable to have to. Let's go see how the boss is. He can take care of himself. Yeah, he might want some company, though. Well, the best place to find out anything in a town of this sort is the saloon. The best man for it's the bartender. Rowdy. Yeah. Let's stay away from girls from Glen Falls. Sure, a long time since I've seen you fellas. We ain't never been here before. Well, that explains it. <laughs> don't have much trade here in the afternoon. Well, tell the truth, don't have much trade at night either. Of course, in the morning we're closed. Well, you uh, serve whiskey, though, don't you? I'm glad you mentioned that. Are you the owner of this place? Yep, the owner, the bartender, the cheap customer. You name it, I'm him. Oh, dirt it. Same thing every day, wrong key. Yeah, oh, oh, hold it. Uh, Real nice town you got here. What town? This one, Ornsville. <laughs> Used to be just a wide place in the road. It ain't even that anymore. But you got a jail, though. Yeah. Usually they don't have any more customers over there than they have in here. I guess it's uh, just a big day for both of us. Somebody in jail? Yeah, horsey. How do you know that? Oh, a town as small as this. Anybody sneezes, everybody wipes their nose. Uh, whose horse was stolen? A fellow named Cronin. He's got a small spread out about four or five miles out of town. Uh, don't go away, fellas. I'll be right back. This ain't sure I'm booming around here. Well, what did we find out? We found out things sure are booming. Yeah, well, that ain't helping Mr. Favor none. We gotta wait for that fellow Cronin. We ain't heard much about him, though. He was too quick to call for the law. Well, that horse came in there without saddle or bridle. We knew it straight. He should have known the same thing. Well, it might be a pleasure waiting for Cronin when that owner, bartender, and chief customer gets back. Cronin can't come in till the morning. All right. You want me to stay around here? No, I'll go on home and get some rest. Good night, Tom. Good night. Hey, does that mean I gotta spend the night here? My wife will bring you supper. I'm staying in town myself tonight. As soon as Cronin gets here in the morning, he gets your business over with. Well, I'm sure glad Mr. Cronin can spare the time in the morning. Well, this is a lousy deal, you know. You can't do anything by hanging around here. Might as well get back to the camp. I'll leave you here? Well, it seems like a nice, safe place to be. Uh, we'll stay here and keep you company. You got eating money? No. Well, the sheriff ain't gonna feed you. Well, it won't hurt us to miss a few meals. Ain't no sense to it. I'll see you all in the morning. All right.
Sheriff? Yes, sir. Any witnesses around now? Nothing you say would be official. You really think I'm guilty of this charge? Jim Cronin made that charge. That doesn't answer the question. I didn't mean it to. Hey, don't you ever look at a man when you're talking to him? never seen me before. I wish I never had. The name is James Cronin, ma'am. You've seen me before lots of times. You're gonna keep right on seeing me. Jim. Not anymore, Jim. Not ever again. The wind must be blowing from the wrong direction. I've been trying to tell you for a long time. I don't, I don't want to see you anymore. I know. Been known even before you did. The trouble with you is you're a good woman. You just lost your head for a while. It's your husband's fault, mostly, in being stubborn as well as stupid. We don't have to talk about Tom. If you changed your mind, well, I ain't changed mine. It's still you and me. Suit yourself. But what we plan still happens. Otherwise... I... I can't. I just can't, Jim. You wouldn't want me to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your husband, now, would you? I never understood why anyone could kill before. Now I do. You're frightening me something terrible. Get out of my house. I'll do what you want. Sure you will. I'll drop by again. Wilson? Sheriff Wilson. Sheriff who can't even... Put that bottle on that hit rail. What are you going to do with that gun now, Dorn? Get your horse and get out of here. Sure to bother the sheriff. That's the job. One of these days, Tom, they're going to shoot back. You bring the food for the prisoner? Yes. And you. When are you going to give in? Realize you shouldn't be a sheriff? Take the food inside. Prisoner. 
time. Thank you. Hey, what was all the shooting about? Nothing important. Here's your supper. Ah, it looks good. It is good. My wife's a fine cook. At least none of the prisoners ever complain. Mmm, I can see why. Get ready for coffee, yell. I could use some light. Should have left the door open. Coming home tonight? No. Oh. We're staying. Then he's got a spare room over the saloon. I'll stay there. Well, would you mind if I stayed with you tonight? I mean, when you're not home, I get frightened. I, I just worry about you. May I? This ain't gonna take long. I run this office, Cronin. Well, for right now, you ain't got no office to run. I ain't pressing charges. What? Wait a minute, that ain't enough. I've been accused of horse stealing. They ain't no horse been stolen. You reported a stolen horse, Cronin. Miller, that's my fault, Sheriff. I kind of forgot about the busted log in the corral fence. I saw it, Sheriff. Told Miller he'd better own up to it. That's what he did. So this morning, I told Mr. Cronin the horse strayed. Wasn't stolen at all. I guess, Mr. Favor, a trail boss is used to delays of one kind or another. Sorry. Let's go, boy. Favor's gun. You think, Mr. Favor? Too bad about what happened. This envelope was sealed last night. We just ripped it open. There was fifty thousand dollars in this envelope. If there was fifty thousand dollars in that envelope last night, there's fifty thousand dollars in there now. Well, look at it. Are you blind? Yes, Mr. Favor, I am. You said your wife was wearing a blue dress. Her blue dress is gingham, and that smells a lot different than cotton or silk. It's newspaper, Mr. Wilson. Cut up into the shape of money. Then that's what was in there last night. Philadelphia newspaper. And you were in Philadelphia. And brought the newspaper back with me. And the money. And I'm the only man that knows the combination of that safe. Well, you know where that puts you. Because I'm telling you there was money in that envelope. Are you calling me a thief? I'm saying that somebody is. Maybe you lost the money or gambled it away. Maybe you think by accusing me, you can get yourself out of trouble. Did I know I was going to be arrested and have my things taken away from me so I could plan this thing? If there was money and it was stolen, then I'm the only one could have stolen it. Then you're the man that stole it. Man can get himself shot saying that about Mr. Wilson. I'm going back to our camp. I'll give you time to get the money together, but you better show up with it soon. Or we'll all be coming back into town. Oh, I didn't take the money, Jim. You're a liar. No. We hung around long enough to find out the money's gone. I don't know anything about that. I just know I couldn't do what you asked. 
There was a time. Yes, there was, but not anymore. And you understand that I love my husband. So much you'd like to convince me that he stole the trail he boss's didn't. money. It ain't natural, neither, Mr. Cronin. It's got to be. Were you planning on keeping it all for yourself? I was afraid you'd try taking it at the jail. You're not as smart as I thought. Would I have planned all this? Starting with accusing the trail boss of stealing my horse if I'd wanted to grab and run? No. This way it's either the sheriff or the trail boss. It's nothing to do with Jim Cronin at all. Miller, saddle up a horse for Mrs. Wilson. She's coming with us. You've got the money. Now, why don't you leave me alone? This isn't real peaceful. Thanks, Bruce. Well, no one's riding in with the money. Yeah, I know. You know that as well as I do, but you ain't doing nothing about it. What do I do? Shoot it out with a blind man? No, but we could go in and take that town apart and get the money that way. The town ain't got it. The town's backing that sheriff. Sheriff didn't think I took the horse. I don't think he took the money. Why? Because he's blind? Because he couldn't have known I'd ever be in his jail. Hello, Mr. Faber, Mr. Quick, Mr. Yates, Mr. Whisperer, Mr. Well, Scarlet. You're not in school now. You don't need to be calling the roll. Well, it's just, uh... Harkness. I just... Harkness. Well, he must be right fond of you to tell you his given name. Well, Harkness was my grandfather's name on the Mushgrove side. Uh, this is Miss Winkle. Miss Winkle? How do, do ma'am. How do you do? Uh, she's, she's my school teacher. I'm very pleased to meet you. You're Mr. Favor, aren't you? Harkness told me a lot about you. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. And you're Mr. Wishbone, of course. That's who I am. Harkness told me a lot about you, too. Oh, I am not. Oh, I'm sure it is. Harkness told me you were the finest trail cook in the world. Oh, well, he's kind of the finest cook's loss. I don't think that's very nice. Oh, well, there's a difference between a plain, ordinary louse and a cook's louse. Harkness told me how proud he is to be your assistant. Yeah, that's what he is, my assistant. Uh, Miss Winkle and me was out picnicking. Miss Winkle and I, Harkness. Uh, uh, Harkness and I was, I mean, well, anyway, Mr. Faber, we just heard what happened in town. And I told Miss Winkle right away that you wouldn't be doing nothing but telling it to. Thanks, Mush uh, Mr. Mushgrove. And uh, Miss Winkle said right away that Mr. Wilson wouldn't be lying either. Well, that doesn't help very much. I said Mr. Wilson. I didn't mention any other name. Who else might you have mentioned? If I were a gossip, Mrs. Wilson. I don't care much for gossip, Miss Winkle. Oh, neither do I. Of course, there are times. And this is one of those times. Mrs. Wilson almost left Mr. Wilson two or three times after he was blinded. But she didn't. If I were a gossip. Of course you're not, Miss Winkle. Orangeville's such a small town, anyone could tell you. Tell me what? The name of the reason why Mrs. Wilson didn't go. Well, I'd appreciate your telling me. James Cronin. Yeah, Cronin would be the one who planned the whole thing. You sure about this? Sure, I'm sure, and the only one in town who doesn't know about it is Mr. Wilson himself. Quint, saddle me a horse. I'm going with you. No, you don't need any help breaking up a man's life. Thanks, Mr. Wistow. Thanks. Mr. 
favor? Huh? Yeah. Well, that's no great mystery. I know every man's footsteps in town. Look, Sheriff. I have to tell you something. I don't know where to begin. It's about my wife. Go ahead. Yeah. It's not that easy, though. Maybe I can make it easier for you. You're a stranger in town. But you found out in one day what it's taken me months to find out. Except underneath. I really knew it all the time. After losing my sight, I spent a year learning. Learning how to see with my ears, and my hands, and my nose. And then I thought I, I really wasn't blind, but I was wrong. Even if I got my eyes back, I'd have still been blind. But there's one thing I didn't know. That she was a thief, too. You better come with me. She ran. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. The place has been searched, turned upside down. She would have known where the money was. Mr. Favor, there's one thing I need from you. I know the road between here and town, but I don't know the road between here and Cronin's ranch. Let's go. to come with you. It's not going to do you any good. I didn't want to leave this part of the country. I like it here. Mr. Cronin, out there. Take her the blind, tie her up, and keep her quiet. Let go. Let go of me. Stop it. Evening, Sheriff. Mr. Favor. Where's my wife? You ought to know better than me. I know as well as you. Well, then neither one of us knows a thing. We're searching your place. I don't think so. No light in the house. There's one in the barn, though. A couple of Cronin's men are just coming out of the barn. Then that's where we start. You ain't starting nowhere, Sheriff. You're finished. If you've got nothing to hide in that barn. It's my barn. You're right! She in that barn? Yeah. This'll make us even.
And so you can say as much about what happened as you like, or as little. We've got our money back. There's nothing more to be said. I have no way to repay you. The only thing I can do is tell you that I'm, I'm resigning as sheriff because it's better for the town, I guess, and because my wife wants it that way. Horses are ready to go, boss. Shh. Everything's not quite ready. Well, goodbye until next year. Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? In front of everybody? Marcy! Marcy! Bye, Harkness. You were a good student. Uh, goodbye. Uh, thanks for her books. Uh, you're a real great teacher. you can say about driving a herd up the Sedalia Trail. Beeves stay beeves. The drovers stay human, and trouble is always saddling up a fresh horse, preparing to ride with you. What you can't be sure of is the direction it's coming from, the face it's gonna be wearing, the name it'll be traveling under. What you can be sure of is that trouble knows your name. Mine's Gil Faber, trail boss. Just like the map said. Uh, afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to help me get on off the horse. Still don't want to say you're sorry, huh? What do you mean, sorry? I mean, taking off the drive just because you got a little hitch in your get along. Have you ever tried bumping up and down on that chuck wagon? Up and down, down and up. 
Every time that wagon's going up, I'm coming down. Boy, it jars me. My back's jarred. I ain't sure I ain't jarred for good. Well, Mr. Favor told me to get you well while we're in this town, so you just look around up and down the street there and see if there's anything going to make you well except them signs. What's wrong with the signs? Looks like some medicine man might have wrote them. Guaranteed cure for rheumatism, ulcers, white swellingness, and general debility. You got any better idea what I could do? No, and I can't take you back to the drive till you get better. You're mighty well told you can. So? Well, so I'll get well. But my back hasn't got any choice but to get well in a town like this. Ah, uh, just because you heard this town's a spay. It isn't a spay, it's a spa. Spa? Yeah, spa, that's what they call a town that's a healing place, spa. How you spell it? S-P-A. S-P-A, spay. Why don't you call a spay a spay? Well, that's very funny. I'm going to laugh and laugh at that. Well, go ahead and laugh. Might do you good. Water and feed them, gents? Yeah, how much? By the day, week, or month? By the hour. Whatever you say. I'll meet you back at the hotel after I send a telegram. Go for you, mister? Yeah, I want to send a message to Sedalia, Missouri. Well, let's have it. Well, I haven't written it out yet. You got something I can write on? Well, you know what you want to say? Well, I guess I do. Well, then say it. I can send it as fast as you give it to me. Who's it going to? It goes to Mr. Dan Reynolds at the Drover's Hotel in Sedalia, Missouri. Tell him to wire information about their current beef price trend. Uh, favor will pace the movement of herd accordingly. Sign Pete Nolan. That'll be 35 cents. When can I expect to hear back? Depends on who's drinking and who ain't. Might take a couple hours, might take a week. I need to hear in a couple hours. I hope nobody's drinking. Someone. A little fellow with a beard and a bad back. You looking for me? Excuse me. You out of your mind? Well, I'm taking the mud back. I thought you wanted to duck your back, not your face. Well, can I help it if I slipped a little? Besides, you don't look too good, and you ain't taking the treatment. He's a cook for our trail outfit. Trail outfit? How big? 3,000 head. It's a lot of beef. Where are you taking it? Sedalia, Missouri. First big trail outfit I've heard about this way. 2,000 head. It's a man-sized job. I should know I'm a cattleman myself. Well, I'm not in charge. Gil Favors, the trail boss. I do the scout. My name's Pete Nola. Paul Evans. Sit down. Are you going to be around here for a while? Might be a couple of days. Might be we could do a little uh, drinking and bragging this evening, huh? <laughs> Sounds all right to me. Beats sitting over there in that boarding house. How'd you get clean so fast? Well, two tubs. One with mud, one with clear water. You feel any better? Well, what do you expect out of a mud bath? Now I've got to take me a mineral bath. Must cure everything from bunions to bullet holes. 
<laughs> what are you hanging around for? You look healthy enough to do a day's work. All right, boys. I'd like nothing better than doing a day's work. Trouble is, I can't make my legs feel the same way. to look in on me? How do you feel? When are you going to stop asking, Laurie? I think I'll always ask. I told you before we left home that bringing me here was a waste of time. I'm a cripple. If you haven't accepted it, I have. But that doesn't mean I want anyone feeling sorry for me, least of all you. All right, Paul. Not going to let anything upset that composure, are you? That prissy schoolmistress composure of yours. Will you let me talk to Again? you? Again? All right, talk. I'm trying to make up my mind about something. Congratulations. Anything I can do to help? It's something important to both of us. What is it, the Besson party? Should you go or should you stay away? Paul. Again, it depends on whether I want to go or not, doesn't it? Can't stand the idea of having me sitting there in a wheelchair and spoiling it for you, can you? It isn't a matter of standing it. I've always been able to stand it. All right, Laurie. I'll let you know if I decide you can go to the party. I'll let you know if I decide you should stay home like a good, loyal, long-suffering wife. Does that take care of your problem? Yes, Paul. And I should have known you'd be such a help. Seem to be moving better. You think that mineral bath helped? Pain's gone for the time being. Maybe it's worthwhile coming here after all. Let's just see if I get a good night's sleep for a change. Back from Sedalia for you. Good, let's have it. Well, some other party sent the wire. It said Dan Reynolds is out of town, won't be back till tomorrow. Well, we'll check with you in the morning. It's open. Come in. Mr. Nolan. Yeah, I brought over one of our trail maps. I thought you might be interested. Good, sit down. <clears throat> show you where we go. Now, here we are here. We go right up through the Indian Territory, over into Kansas, and right up to Sedalia, Missouri. You think you get through there with most of your beeves? Well, we figured it that way when we left San Antonio. We haven't changed our minds yet. Ooh. I wish I could go with you. Funny thing, I... I've been keeping away from people lately. You come along and I feel right at home with you. I wonder if I could ask you to do me a kindness. Anything I can. My wife hasn't had it too easy since I was hurt. Weren't for me, she could be having good times. Like tonight, there's a party over at Besson's Ranch. I'm not up to traveling ten miles back and forth. You'd be doing me a real service if you'd take her to that party. I haven't even met your wife, Mr. Evans. Isn't there someone she knows you can send her with? Oh, well, my brother Jubal, but he's running the ranch while I'm away. Mr. Nolan, I haven't been too easy to get along with. I used to live in a saddle like you. Glue to this chair is no life for me or for her. Do this for me, will you please? Laurie? Yes, Paul. Would you come here a minute, please? I want you to meet someone. I'll be there in a moment. 
tell you how glad I am that you came over. We haven't been getting along too well lately. I get to feeling low and I take it out on her. I don't mean to, but... All right, this is Mr. Nolan. He's a scout for a trail outfit. Moving north to Sedalia, Missouri. Mr. Nolan, my wife, Lori. Mrs. Evans? How do you do, Mr. Nolan? A new dress? Yes, I bought it yesterday. Looks just right for the party tonight. Mr. Nolan's taking you. Mr. Nolan? You need to go to that party, Lori. Do you good. Besides, you don't want folks saying that you can't get out because your husband's a stay-at-home. Paul, I don't mind. I want you going. to go. I mean it. What about it, Pete? Mr. Nolan, this is an imposition. You must say no. Well, I'd be glad to take you to the party. Good. How about a drink, huh? Fine. Well, I know you ain't asked for my two cents worth, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. Any man that lets himself get talked into squiring another man's wife to a party is plum loco. Wishbone, I told you, her husband asked me as a favor to him. I don't care what he asks you. You're letting yourself in for trouble. They're fine people. If a man like that asks you to do something for him, you try to do it. You better get her back by midnight, or by morning this whole town will be buzzing. Wishbone, you would have made somebody a wonderful mother. Mr. Evans? Mrs. Evans? My wife looks very beautiful tonight. Wouldn't you say so, Mr. Nolan? Oh, yes, sir. I'd say so. Good night, Paul. Good night, sir. <laughs> Not much Paul Evans can do about it, either. Wonder how his brother Juba will take it when he finds you out that you... You always wonder about things that are none of your business. Yeah. And if you don't cut in, you're going to get cut out. Do me the honor, Miss Evans. Grab that lady in calico and get her over here on the floor. Hey, we need another couple right there. Another couple over here. Bring the lady on the floor and here we go, everybody out. Hey, cowboy, bring that girl in calico and bring her on out here. Paul, can I dance? No. What I can't figure is how this stranger got the honor. We all thought it was Jubal. You shut your big, small-town mouth. Now, about it, Pop. Your corner's on. Now, circle little left and go down the hall. Circle little left in a great big ring. All the way round a great big ring. Now, reefers back, single file. Lady, lady, jazz, run wild. When you get home, everybody's playing. Everybody's playing. Now, ladies, do set her back to the bar. Bound the ring hand. 
I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Oh, yes. Mr. Nolan, would you mind getting me a glass of punch? Sure. Can I have a glass of punch? Not now. I thought you were coming along. I couldn't. It didn't work out. Who's the man? A trail scout Paul just met and liked. Why did you bring him out here? I couldn't help it. Paul insisted. It doesn't matter. You're leaving with me. No, I don't know, Jubal. Look, you packed your bag. Nobody told you to do that. You're not putting me off this time. This is a thing we could be sorry for, terribly sorry. We've talked about all that. It's settled. I wish I could be sure. If you're worried about money, I sold 200 steers. I got paid in cash. I got everything we need to take us wherever we want to go, in style. Paul's money, Paul's steers. Who has a better right to them? You think Paul would have what he has now if I hadn't helped him get it? I helped him and he took it all. There's no sharing with Paul. Had to be the boss, top man. I know. And the way he treats me like a hired hand. Look at the way he treats you. Don't tell me you want to stay around here and take it. No, no, of course not. All right, then you're leaving with me. You gotta say it now and do it now. All right, all right, I'll go. But I don't, I don't want to go right away. Why? Well, people might notice Mr. Nolan might start looking for me. Now or later, what difference does it make? Your glass of punch, Mrs. Evans. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Nolan, this is my brother-in-law, Jubal Evans. How are you? How are you? Well, would you care to dance? She doesn't want to dance anymore. Well, why don't you let her decide? You better go inside and have yourself a time. I'll take care of Lori. Do you care to dance? Not now, Mr. Nolan, thanks. Now, you better go on inside. Look, I can go inside without you guiding me. Jubal. All right, but just tell him to go away. I hope you won't mind if I let Jubal take me home. Home? Well, back to town. Is that where you're going? What do you mean by that? Jubal, let me handle this. Uh, it's all right, Mr. Nolan. Why don't you do as Jubal said? Go inside and enjoy yourself. Mrs. Evans, this afternoon when I went to rent a buggy to drive us here, I didn't think much about it when the stable keeper told me you'd rented the only one he had. I figured you already knew you were coming here, but it's none of my business. And then I couldn't help wondering about the bag, the traveling bag, the one you wanted me to leave alone. It's kind of big just for a party. I don't see how this concerns you, Mr. Nolan. Well, that's what I kept telling myself um, until I met your brother-in-law. This shouldn't concern you either. You're getting ready to leave your husband tonight, aren't you? This just doesn't concern you, Mr. Nolan. Paul Evans put you in my charge, and I brought you here. Take your hands off her. Please stay out of it. You want to leave him, that's between you and your conscience, but you're going to do it after we get back to town. Mr. Nolan. He's hurt. He's all right. Come on, let's go. Mr. Evans? Let me alone. I'm going You're inside. You're going home. I'll scream. Go ahead and scream. Get up. Why, Jubal, what on earth happened to you? I'm all right. You'd better come right into the house and lie down. I got no time for that.
away. He'll come after us. Yeah. Not actually going through with this, taking me back like a runaway child. Why don't we turn this way? Shortcut back to town. You mean you're hiding from Jubal. You're afraid he'll come after us. You're scared he'll have men with him. I'll just soon not meet up with him. Well, I'm not going to let you go through with it. Better not, will you? Thing to do. Listen, get in that bug here, I'll put you in it. I don't need your help. in them dancing shoes. You don't think I'm going to walk back to town? There don't seem to be any other way, thanks to you. I'm not leaving here. Well, then we'll spend the night. We're going to need a place where there's some shelter. Spend the night out here? Don't be ridiculous. We passed a spot about a mile back where there's an outcropping and some brush and stuff. I think we can build a fire. It won't be seen from the road. I'm staying here. <laughs> there for all you care. I was wondering how much longer you were going to be stubborn. I'd never have found you if it hadn't been for the fire. Oh, I figured you'd see it all right. Might as well get comfortable. This makes things different, doesn't it? Different? You can hardly expect to take me back to town now. Oh, I'll take you back, all right. How? You plan on carrying me? If you think I'll walk, you're mistaken. I'll find that rig in the morning. That old horse won't run too far. And you're still going to insist on taking me back. I thought we'd settled it. You settled it the way you wanted. I'm not going back. Well, we'll talk about that in the morning. Will you believe me when I tell you Paul doesn't even care if I go back? Of course he cares. You're his wife. And I also remind him of his frustrations, his helplessness. He hates having me around. What happened to Mr. Evans? A horse fell and rolled on him. When was that? A year and a half ago. Well, you take a man that's crippled like that, a man that was once strong and important. He needs understanding. Understanding? I have tried to understand him. I have fetched and carried and given him sympathy for hours on end. Well, you made that contract when you married him. And I wanted to carry it out, but he wouldn't let me. He would not let me. Too bad he's not here. You could tell him about it. All right. Be smug. Be righteous. Why 
don't you get some sleep? So I can look refreshed when you drive me back? You've only known Paul a matter of hours. Why do you care so much about taking me back to him? Well, let's just say I like to finish a job once I start it. So this is a job, is it? You're interfering in my life just because of some small amount of pride you carry around with you? Are you really in love with your husband's brother? I suppose in your mind that makes me the wrong kind of woman. Well, are you in love with him? What difference does it make? You can probably answer that better than I can. I wonder just how deep this self-righteousness of yours really goes. Think how it could be if you were to take me away. It's getting a little lower. I better get some. Do you believe in things happening to people all of a sudden? Important things? Well, you can't see a man die in a stampede without knowing that. I mean other things. Yeah, I imagine it goes for other things. Feeling between a man and a woman? Maybe. There's something I want you to know before we leave here. I've never been in love with Jubal. He hated Paul the way I began to hate him. He gave us something in common. We had lots of talks, and I agreed to go away with him. There's something else I want you to know. I'm still going to leave Paul, not with Jubal, but I'm going to leave him. Well, we better get going. You know what it means for us to go back into town now? Yeah, I know. What are you going to tell my husband? I'm going to tell him the truth. What is the truth? That we started back and had an accident. No more. Is there any more? Suppose he doesn't believe you. Well, we'll just have to take that chance. Let's go. Town last night. I didn't want to bother you, so I took a room. I was wondering if you were feeling any better. I left you in charge of the ranch. Don't worry, everything's all right. It better be. You know, I can do big things with that ranch if you give me more authority with the hands. Man makes his own authority in this country, Jubal. You treat the hands like they were dirt. They just don't like you. Where's Laurie? Went to a party at Besson's last night. Yeah, I was there. I know. Got yourself mixed up in some kind of fight. Got beat up and rode off in a huff, huh? What time she get in? She didn't. Out all night? I expect to some good reason for it. Theodore! What 
is it, Martha? Look. Are they just coming back? Do you suppose their buggy broke down? Girls, get in the house. Come on. Good morning, Paul. Have a nice time at the party? It was a nice party. I've been wondering if you ever got there. We got there. Decide to stay over? No, we left early. So I heard from everybody that attended. Uh, we had an accident on the way back. A horse ran off. I can't make up my mind about you, Mr. Nolan. Either you got more gall than a polecat. Wait a minute, Mr. Evans. You asked me as a favor to take your wife to that dance and look out after her. I did that. What about it, Laurie? What he says is true, Paul. Tom, get Mrs. Evans' bag and take it inside. I'll take the buggy back to the living Never mind. Jubal, take care of it. You two know each other? We might have met last night. Jubal Evans. Pete Nolan. Goodbye, Mrs. Evans. Mr. from Sedalia yet, where are you staying? Over at the boarding house. Well, if you want to pay an extra 15 cents, I'll bring the message over as soon as it gets here. All right. Where have you been all this time? We won't go into that. Well, maybe you won't, but there's some folks in this town that will. You can't keep a married woman out all night. Oh, shut up. Now, Pete, there's something you ought to know, and I'm going to tell you. That woman's husband is the biggest cattle rancher this side of Fort Worth. He's got a dozen wranglers all over town. Now, that's mighty bad odds in an unfriendly place. I can't leave till I get that message from Sedalia. Pete! Just let me ask you one thing. Why did you let that drover take you away last night? I don't want to talk about it. All right, we'll forget it for now. Talk about it later. The important thing is our getting away from here. I'm not going with you. You're not what? I'm not going away with you, Jubal, ever. Look, quit acting like a schoolgirl. You can't shake off the way we feel for each other. I don't feel the same way you do. You couldn't change that quickly. Not unless something happened last night. It never meant the same to me. You're lying. You went soft for that drover. Sure, you go for a ride in the dark with some stranger, and all of a sudden he's a man in your life. Do you know what you are? Tell me, Jubal. Tell me what I am. Get it over with, and then let me alone. Does Paul know how you feel about this? I'm sure he will now, as soon as you tell him. No use dreaming about it, Pete. Your pay for the whole drive wouldn't make a dent in the price of this. I got the right horse for it. <laughs> the horse can't afford it any better than you can. How much longer are we gonna stay around here? We leave those horses in the corral much longer, they're gonna get spoiled on us. I can't leave till I get a message from Sedalia. Well, I'll go on up to the telegraph office. I'm getting a queasy feeling about this town. 
Why you keep on cleaning those guns is more than I can see. You know you'll never get the chance to go hunting again. Thanks for the kind thought, brother mine. Right now, I say you've got more important things to think about. We've been all through it three times. And you just sit there cleaning guns. Why are you so fired up about this? Lori's my wife, not yours. If you have no family pride, I have. Lori told me everything was all right. I believe her. She never lied to me in her life. I say you're thinking like a fool. I don't want to hear anything more about it, Jubal. You understand? She'd be going there if I wasn't right. And why is he staying in town so long? He's supposed to be with a herd of cattle, isn't he? Get me down the street. Yes, sir. for a telegram message. I've been thinking I might be the reason. You are making things worse. Things couldn't be worse. What with Jubal and Paul here, I'm caught between the hatred of both of them. Your husband doesn't hate you. How can you know? The other afternoon when he brought you in and introduced us, he did it like he was proud of you, like he wanted to show you off. A man doesn't do that with a woman he hates. You should hear the way he talks to me when we're alone. Well, that's because he's afraid. Afraid, Paul? Listen, I know he's been a tough-minded, hard-nosed man. He was proud of his strength. Now that it's gone, he's afraid of losing you. You don't know Paul. I've seen it before. A man like this doesn't want to let on how much he needs someone. He'll do anything to cover up the fear and pain. Paul isn't afraid of anything, and pain doesn't bother him. It's always easy for you to think that way. It's always easy to sleep on another man's hurt. It's no use, Mr. Nolan. I am still going to leave him. And when I do, I'd like to go with you. And if that seems as though I'm laying my pride at your feet, well, I...
Get her inside. What are you going to do? We need time for him to wear out that rage. He'll kill you now if he finds you. He'll kill you, too. I know it. Larry! I'm going to try to draw him off. I'll make him come after me. The minute I draw him off, you get her inside. Mr. Evans, I don't want to fight you, but you come any closer, I'll kill you. Keep going, keep going! Paul! Go ahead, Paul. If you must kill someone, kill me. Get out of here. That man did nothing to hurt you. I was going to leave before he ever came here. I was going to leave with Jubal. Jubal? You and Jubal? wanted everything I had, everything, even you. I wasn't going to shoot you, Laurie. I couldn't have pulled the trigger. I guess I thought I, I could scare you into staying with me. I guess I've been trying to scare you into that for a long time. I won't try anymore. I won't try anymore. Get a doctor before he bleeds to death. No danger of that, ma'am. It's a good thing you were in that chair. Deflected a bullet just enough to save your life. He is bleeding, though. Better get him inside. Laurie. Laurie. that message finally got here? Yeah, I think there's somebody wants to see you. I'll go get the horses. How's he feeling? Much better. He's going to stay here in town and try swimming in the springs. Your friend said it might help him in time. That's something to be hopeful for. You going now? Yeah. Are you leaving me with him? What else can I do? You know what that means? If I stay now, it means I'll stay here forever. Well, you'll have to make up your own mind to that. You made up my mind. Goodbye, Mr. Nolan. Goodbye. Fifty-year-old 
skilled. I swear, boy, next year I'm gonna up and drive around New Mexico all together. Por supuesto. The only water we will find around here is straight down. Do you think maybe we should go back to the herd? No, not until we make sure. Do me a favor. The wagon? That uh, sounds maybe like a stage. It's in your favor. It's a runaway. <laughs> Don't blame yourself, Beaumont. How could you have known? Hiding under the seat as you were. Can't you be In a country like this, only a fool would waste water on a man who's already in his grave. Put it inside the poor man, Lieutenant. He doesn't need a bath. What happened? Uh, <clears throat> there were Indians. Uh, they hit us about four miles back. Mr. Go favor. Trail boss and a cattle drive, a mile or two back down the road. Uh-huh. Well, I'm not sure, Mr. Favor, but uh, I think they were Apaches. Apaches? This far north? The only boundary an Apache knows is that set by his own shadow. You sound like you know him pretty good. Every time Senor Domingo opens his mouth, out rolls a pearl of wisdom. <laughs> Take it easy. You got a couple of bullets in you. You know who did it? Ghosts, some sort of heathens. They weren't like any Indians I've ever known. They came at us in the shadows, as if killing was the only thing they'd ever known. Ghosts, like from the dead. Like from the... As a stranger is a friend. Or should be. Senor Fever, about the one who calls himself Domingo. In my country, it is said a man who walks alone is only half a man. Oh, a ghost, Jesus? I'll tell you what. When he stands in front of the sun and don't cast no shadow, then I will start worrying, I promise you. Good luck, uh, Mr. Favor. We, uh, we seem to find ourselves in something of a predicament. You do? Well, I should think that would be obvious. All depends on what you're planning to do, doesn't it, Lieutenant? <laughs> you know, Mr. Favor, you sound just like my superior on the teaching staff at West Point. The only thing missing is the blue uniform. My wrong color. I did wear a pair of bars a couple of years back under General Lee. Uh-huh. Well, let me put it this way. I could drive this stage if I had to, but I don't know the country ahead. You know the country behind? We can turn back, Mr. Favor. My husband and I are already overdue for an engagement in San Francisco. A very important engagement. Mr. and Mrs. Butler are actors, and Miss Shea is, is due for a job in uh, Sacramento, and, and I'm expected at the Presidio. Uh, it's my first frontier assignment. Oh, I see. And you, sir? You have a uh, pressing engagement? 
Well, the only engagement I have is with the man who has the horns and the long pointed tail. <laughs> Mr. Favor, are you familiar with the trail ahead? I do know that Caribou Station is about 12 miles due north. Well, after we got there, the, the men there could take over. I'm sure we could make it worth your while. Mm, yes, think it over, Mr. Favor. Beaumont may offer you as much as $10 to afford a safe conduct. Of course, that's about all he can offer, since he allowed a mealy mouth stage manager to take most of the profits from our last performance. Hang on to your money. The only thing I'm interested in at the moment is water. Hey, Zeus. Skeleton Lake's just above Caribou. Looks like it's going to be our closest water anyway. You want me to go back to the herd? Yeah, tell Roddy what's happened. Tell him to keep the herd moving until I catch up. Oh, Senor Favor, this Domingo made through a shadow, but his eyes, they stopped living a long time ago. Tenga cuidado. Lieutenant, you better ride topside. Keep your eyes open. Senor, since you're so interested in the trail, maybe you'd better ride up in the boot. You can get a real good view from there. That's very good reasoning. With four eyes up there instead of two, we may even be able to see what a ghost looks like. comforts of home, but at least it doesn't bounce. Get those horses unhooked. Lieutenant, you start moving those animals out of the corral. What's the rush, Mr. Faber? It's because it's a little quiet doesn't mean they're going to start the Civil War again. The foster child of silence is death, Lieutenant. Not every battle is fought with bugle and cavalry charges. Come on, let's get moving. Favor, just what is this all about? Butler, you keep him here. Butler, Butler, take the ladies inside and stay away from the windows. Something wrong? Shut up and get inside. We may be leaving here in a hurry.
Mingo. Thanks. To me, you're just another gun, better in here than lying out there in the dust. Yeah, you take that window, oh. shoot anything that moves. But uh, I'm no fighter. You will be before this is over. You will be. You look after him. Came at you with a knife against your rifle. Still, it took three bullets to bring him down. Lieutenant, that's the first lesson you learn out here. Things just don't go by the book. Mingo, how many figure there were? Oh, ten, twelve, no more. Ten or twelve what? Who are they? What do they want of us? The Carillos don't need a reason to fight, senor. Blood is their wine of life. Icarillos? Uh, it's supposed to be the oldest Apache tribe. Been living up in the Sangre de Cristo's reign since Montezuma's time. Story goes, no white man's ever seen him. Kept his eyes. Hey, the ones that hit you this morning? Not the same. Don't worry, my dear. When the man who owns this place comes back, those savages will vanish, just like that. I'm afraid the station keeper won't be back. He's out in the well that's left of him. Certainly you aren't going to be intimidated by a pack of filthy savages. Now, that's really amazing, Mrs. Butler. You haven't been within 50 feet of those savages, and already you know they're filthy. Well, I'd say you have a fair and working nose there. Delilah, my dear, we're doing all we can. You are doing all you can. How? By trying to play the wronged Romeo to an audience of overpainted Juliets with rifles in their hands? This is life or death, Bo, not one of your cheap vaudeville circuits. Delilah, please. Lieutenant, either you do something right now, or... Or what? You will report him to your authorities? Perhaps one of those uh, filthy savages will carry your message. Mrs. Butler, we have one rifle and three revolvers. We can't run, and to make a frontal assault would be suicide. But we can't just sit here! I'm afraid that's what we're gonna do. Least ways till it gets dark. Favor, what I can't understand is why Apaches, or especially these Hikarios, would raid this far north. Lesson number two, Lieutenant. An Indian has a set of values, all his own. They could have run your stage down this morning, but they decided to double back here and spring this little trap. You can set us up like fish in a barrel. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Oh, it makes sense, all right, providing they want to take one of us alive. But why? What do they want of us? You might try asking the man who knew they were Hikarillos. Well, Domingo? Come on, oh. Like uh, Jonah in the belly of the whale. You're entitled to some answers. Until two months ago, De Carrillo called me hermano, one of their own. Oh, yes. For 16 years, I put on their pains, share their lodging, kill their enemies. They call me White Eyes, the warrior who come to them from the setting sun. You mean... You actually lived with them? Yes. Contempt, senora, is a vice of fools. There's a great deal that the Apache can offer your people. But because of his pride and honor, and because of his rifle, there will never be eyes to see or ears to hear. I taught them new ways to outwit them in Breno and the Caragao. And in return, they gave me sanctuary and peace. Sanctuary? From what? From the voices of angry men, from the stench of a disease called hate,
Perhaps even from myself, what does it matter? If you felt that way, why did you leave the Apaches? Man is not master of his own fate. There was a girl. A Mexican captive. I fought for her freedom. In order to do that, I had to kill a chief. And your brothers outside took it wrong, huh? The man I just killed is the chief's son. The mind of a Carillo is like the point of an arrow. Once it is set in motion, it's impossible to change the way. Why didn't you tell us this morning, when we still had a chance to outrun them? Because once the Carillo found the trail of the stagecoach, there was no chance. Maybe not for you, but what about us? What right did you have to pull us down into your own private hell? The descent to hell is very simple, especially for those who do not have eyes to see. The next time you travel, senor, take more care in choosing your travel companions. What next time? Because of you, none of us will get out of this alive. Mr. Favor, I see only one way out of this, a way that Mr. Domingo himself pointed out from the book of Jonah. And he said to them, what shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm to us? And Jonah said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth, and the sea ceased its raging. At your service, senor, if you think you're man enough. I say throw him back to his Apache friends. The sooner the better. And what does the military mind have to say, Lieutenant? Well, if it was up to me, Mr. Butler, I would say that it is better to lose one life than to lose six. But it's not up to me. It isn't up to any of us. You accuse a man of condemning us and then turn around and condemn him. We're all in this together. And besides, whatever Domingo is, he's another gun, one we need. But they want him, not us. What about your driver, Miss Butler, and the gentleman outside in the well? To the Carillo, life is but a cloud that appears and then disappears. It has no meaning, means nothing. Yeah, even if they get him, there's no guarantee they'll let it go at that. Then it's hopeless. Oh, not as long as we can hold him off. Not as long as there's a chance I can reach my men. Words cannot put out the moons in your favor. Nor can they create life where there is only death. Look at their faces and you'll see what I see. A cemetery of hope. chase away those Indians, my dear, but it might make living with them a little easier. It's always been the easy way, hasn't it, Bo? Even now, you're on stage, a make-believe man in a cardboard world. A coward dies many times before his death, Delilah. This and recreating the lives of better men, however trimmed with tinsel and artificial theatrics, only makes what I am a little less painful. It might help. The only thing that'll help me is a one-way ticket back to civilization without the pleasure of your company or your flask. Mr. Favor, hmm? you still think you've got a chance? 
Holmes' man believes he's got a chance. He always has one. I won't have to wait much longer. It's getting about as dark as it's going to get. What about your shoulder? I don't know what they're teaching at the point these days, but me, I don't ride on my shoulder. It doesn't look very good, but it'll keep us going. Best looking mess of beans I've ever seen. Just fine. Mr. Domingo, you better eat something. Oh, gracias, no. Mr. Domingo, would you mind if I asked you a question? Would it matter if I did? The Bible tells us that Ruth went to live among a strange people, but only because she had to. What was your reason? What gods did your Indians have that gave you peace? Man gives himself peace, muchacha. Not painted idols from a forgotten world. Then why search for it there? Why not among your own kind? Because I have no kind. Use a gun, it's much less painful. Back the window. You all right? Yes, I, I think so. Anything? Nothing. Not even a shadow. That's the way it's gonna stay until they think the fruit is ripe enough to pick. And then their rifles won't miss. Your Domingo just gave you lesson number four, Lieutenant. The Apache technique of taking an objective by waiting. Make sure way to beat him is make sure you don't give him any target. Till I get back, you make sure it stays that way. Senor, your life means nothing to me, but your revolver does. Take my word, you try to ride through and you will lose both. I uh, don't. No? Doesn't seem like there's much choice. You're wrong, Mr. Favor. You can stay here. Lesson number five. That's one I did learn at the point. Never attempt a mission the enemy expects unless you have everything possible in your favor. I don't think I'd call that shoulder of yours a factor in our favor. And like I said, I don't ride on my shoulder. You don't ride at all. Since our friend here is not exactly the type to volunteer, I guess I win the strawberries. You win the strawberries? Look, Lieutenant, those are Apaches out there, not pictures in a textbook. And to them, those gold bars only mean one thing, a target they can't miss. Uh, I may be messed up, but at least I know what I'm doing. You haven't got a chance. This Colt says I have six chances. I read that as pretty good odds. In a classroom, maybe. Not out there. Step away from the door. Ten. Just a favor. I don't want to waste a bullet. I might need it. Ma'am, Mr. Butler. Good luck, Lieutenant. All right, hit it. Head southeast, then. Don't stop for nothing till you get to the herd. Don't worry, Mr. Favor. Even the second lieutenant couldn't miss 3,000 counts. All right, let's go. <laughs> Get some rest. It's gonna be a long night.
Uh, this herd of yours, Mr. Favor, just how far away is it? 10, 12 miles. Well, then if the uh, lieutenant gets through, he could be back with help by sunup. Give take an hour or two. Well, uh, if, he, uh, if he doesn't make it, what then? Then we have another long day and a longer night. Well, worry about sunup when it gets here. You better get back to your window, brother. No man can manage a woman's world, Mr. Domingo. And I consider a can of beans to be a woman's world. You will, please. Besides, being busy helps. You go into California, muchacha. Why? Because I've never been there before. Because there, maybe... Maybe you will uh, find peace. It might last to be looked through so easily. Loneliness wears its own face, muchacha. For everyone to see, if they look. Like you, Mr. Domingo, I have no kind. There was a home once, an Irish home, which meant it was filled with the wonders of Brian Baru, the mountains of the morn, and good brown whiskey. And then, it wasn't a home anymore. My father and my brother joined the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and started a fight not even the legendary Finn McCool could finish. They brought their bodies home in a wheelbarrow. Iron wheels on cobblestones. The sound I'll hear every day of my life. Better than the sound of Don Quixote's lance breaking against the windmill of hopeless causes. Your father and your brother were fools, muchacha. A fool walks in darkness, Mr. Domingo. Buried in his forgotten world with his painted idols. No. Only a brave man has the courage to face his world. And to face himself. There are no mirrors in a coffin. I will keep my painted idols. And you keep your illusions, muchacha. Where you're going, you will need them. Where I'm going? The golden promise of California. A rich land made richer with the blood of the Mexicano. The Mexicano who's taught only to understand the meaning of the lash and the iron heel. You speak of uh, California, Mr. Domingo, as if you knew it well. I once lived in California. With a girl named Maria? Maria? Well, that's what you called Miss Shea when her skirt caught fire. Quirk of memory. Something like that happened a long time ago. To a girl named Maria. What is it you fear? Your enemies are outside, not in here. You have something to say, say it. Well, you said you became a Hikarillo 16 years ago. That you came to them from the setting sun. That would be California. And the year? 1853. Oh, for heaven's sake, Spo, can't you ever climb down off that stage? Why don't you go back to your window and play your scene for the savages out there? If nothing else works, maybe that'll drive them away. No, 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 no. The play actor has something to say. Let him say. But I warn you, senor. 
I'm not a very good audience. Hey, let's take it easy, huh? We got more than enough to fight outside. It's all about Butler. A legend, Mr. Favor. A legend that may be more fact than fantasy. The only fantasy that you understand, senor, is this. God offers to every mind this choice between uh, repose and truth. This is my compromise, sir. A compromise of cowardice. And what is your choice? Repose or truth? Yeah, well, uh, maybe you'd better go back to your window, Butler. No, no, no. Not until I've solved my little riddle, Mr. Favor. Call it the perverse last wish of a dying man. Delilah, my dear, do you recall our last three performances in Santa Fe? How could I ever forget such a smashing triumph? We played to an audience of 20 people, 10 of whom could speak English. And uh, who sat front row center on each of those nights? Charming, Mr. Domingo. Watching a couple of your performances doesn't elevate him to a legend. Not in itself, it doesn't. But coupled with the things that he has said and done since we first climbed into the stage, to be rattled about like pennies in a poor box, might make a most interesting story. This play you were doing, what was it called? Oh, it was a brilliant piece of work, my dear. Uh, I might add, written by myself. Its title, The Legend of Joaquin Murrieta. Murrieta? Who was he? An outlaw. He ran all over California a few years back. Oh, you don't do him justice, Mr. Favor. Murrieta was more than just an outlaw. He was a, he was a tradition, an enigma, a legend in his own time. It's a man that was called Robin Hood and Butcher. Savior and Satan. So what? Murrieta is dead. You're right, Mr. Favor. A Murrieta is dead. The posse even cut off his head as evidence of their victory. But whose head was it? As I recall, at one time, there were seven Californios who raided under the name of Murrieta. Still doesn't prove anything. Well, not in itself, it doesn't. But consider this possibility. One, incidentally, which has become still another legend about Joaquin. Suppose he escaped. Suppose the posse killed the wrong man. Where could Murrieta go? Not back to Mexico, where there was a price on his head. And certainly there was no haven in California. There could only be one real sanctuary. The mountain wilderness east of California. Where an isolated Indian tribe gave him peace that the world could not offer. All right, is that all? No. Just two more things, Mr. Domingo. Murrieta's wife was a girl called Maria. And when he first came to California, the miners called him White Eyes. It's not bad enough that we have to die. Now it seems we'll have to die for a ghost. Many men have known Maria's. Many men were called white eyes. Some of them have even found a new life among the savages. All right, suppose I am a reincarnation of a legend. Huh? Suppose I am Joaquin Murrieta. Suppose I am a legend of flesh and blood and bones. Would that change anything? Huh? Would that make your dying any easier? You want to know if I'm Murrieta? There's only one way to know. When they come, you look at me. And if I'm smiling, then you know that I'm Murrieta. Because he would love to see the blood flow out of your veins. Because only your screams can blot out the cry. The scream of his Maria when you killed her. It was you and your people and your kind that did it. It was your kind that destroyed Joaquin Murrieta and molded him as an animal without dignity, without honor. Anyways, whatever Domingo is or isn't, it just doesn't matter. We're all in this together, like it or not. Butler?
Mango, come in. It's Carter. Butler, you cover us. Shoot anything that moves. Listen, Mr. Favor, if you, if you, if you can't get through, get, get back to your command at, at any cost. Try this, Delilah. <clears throat> it won't uh, kick back. Being kicked around is the story of my life, Bo. Enough to think for itself, but at least it's hot. How much is left? Uh, that's about it. Any other provisions? Two cans of beans, a little flour, and about a quart of water. It'll do. For how long, Mr. Favor? As long as it takes. Two days, three? We'll be out of here by then. The place where optimism best flourishes, Mr. Favor, is in the mind of a fool. The logic in me argues that what food you have will last longer if there is one less mouth to feed. Mr. Domingo, my apologies, sir, for the theatrics of last night. Call it the prerogative of an actor. A bad one at that. Mr. Butler, what do you think you're doing? The only thing I can do, play a scene. The most important of my life. Oh. Even the failure, my dear, is entitled to his one moment. Butler, get back in here! Uh, don't be a fool. Put down your firearms! A wise man once said, I have come here not to bury you, but to praise you. I am not wise, nor have I come to bury or praise. I am here only to reason. Do you hear? Do you understand? Please, you must listen. There are two women in there. They mean nothing to you. Let them go. Here, 
there is money here. Enough money to buy anything. Please, there must be some way I can make you understand. the corpse to walk. Your husband wanted to die. Why? Why? This is right there in your eyes, lady. They're stone dry. Maybe we should all go out there and end this. No, no, no. Not like that. What difference does it make how, as long as it has to be? The difference between iron wheels and cobblestones and painted idols in a forgotten world. Only a coward sneaks to his death. The longer we stay in here, the better chance we got. I stopped believing in miracles years ago. I just can't fight anymore. You don't have to, muchacha. They want to take me alive. And for that, they would follow me all the way to the river Styx. You give me one hour. By that time, I will lead them halfway to Sangre de Cristi. When they have what they want, they will not take the time to double back. If you stay here, you still got a chance. You're wrong, amigo. I never had a chance. Not up on the mountains and not down here. Mr. Domingo. You're right, senorita. No man can run away from himself, nor can he give himself peace, not alone. Give you some cover. Earth has no sorrow, senora, that heaven cannot cure. If you cannot cry for him, cry for yourself. You know how to use one of these things? I know which end goes off. You start firing when I do. Just give me time to make them keep their heads down. Good luck. Man uh, makes his own luck, amigo. Mr. Domingo, I only wish there was another way. For white eyes, there's only one way.
We get together here to join up these two innocents in the traces of wedded bliss. <clears throat> now, uh, who gives this here child to be married to this man? Me, naturally. You got the ring. Oh, right here. Now, uh, do you... Uh... A bird. Take this here child, uh, Lorraine. Uh, Lorraine, to be your lawful wedded. Amen. I mean, I do. And uh, do you, Lorraine, take Bertia likewise? I do. Uh, the ring. We're stuck. Excuse me a minute. You idiot. I'm stuck, Mr. Wishbone. Oh! Mm. Mushy, you're the best man. You... Go ahead, boy. Set her in place. I hear now pronounce you hitched. All right, Bert. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give her away. That means I'm the first. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wishbone. And we certainly can't forget our best man. Thank you, Mushy. Well, I'll go get it. The what? The cake. Thank you. What's your thing, Mr. Wishbone? Oh, here now. You're staying to eat, and I won't take anything but yes for an answer. Well, thank you, friend, but I gotta get going. Though on second thought, I think I can spare the time for a bite or two. You know, riding circuit don't exactly fill a body out. No. Here now. No, you don't. Now, you may be married, but you're not leaving here until you've been sent off proper. Mushy! Oh, oh. How come you never bake anything like that for us, Wishbone? Toothless, if you can find a woman that's fool enough to say I do, I'll bake you a cake so big that you'll have to climb it to cut it. <laughs> Get off the way. Now, honey, a ship isn't launched without a christening, and a marriage is named right without a cake cutting, so let's get to cutting. Come on, Bert. Your bride's gonna need some help here. Just what's going on here? Uh, well, you see, Senor Wishbone, he... Uh, uh, what I mean is... Uh, we just thought we'd have a little party. A party? What for? Uh, you better ask Senor Wishbone. I'll take care of your horse. Nice to have you back. We was getting kind of worried about you. Wishbone. Well, now, we wanted to wait for you, but the preacher was in a hurry, and well, we didn't know when you'd get back. Wishbone, there's dry country ahead. This herd is trail weary, about ready to break any time. Mr. Favor's up in Denver, and... Preacher? Uh, yeah, this is a wedding celebration, complete with a brand-new bridegroom. Look here. Look who's the bridegroom. 
Come on, honey, come on. I'm afraid this is all my fault, Rowdy. We was going to wait no, until... No, if it's anybody's fault, it's mine. I'm Lorraine Harvey, Mr. Um... Uh, Lorraine, this is Rowdy Yates. He's the man who agreed to take me and my 40 head up to Bighorn Basin. Oh, I can't tell you how grateful we are, Mr. Yates. Oh, well, uh, 40 head uh, don't complicate things too much in a herd this size. But, uh... But, um, uh, a honeymoon might, huh? Yeah, you see, uh, uh, we're going to pull out of here as soon as Quince gets back, and uh, women don't go with trail drives, honeymoon or no. We know that, Rowdy. There's a wagon train over at the fort. Lorraine's going to ride up to Bighorn with them. You see, I was supposed to wait until Bert brought the herd up to the basin to get married, but, well, I met the parson, and uh, I sort of talked him into coming down here, and, well, Cupid and Mr. Wishbone did the rest. Yeah, that figures. Uh, well, never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. That's what I always say. Is that what you always say? So don't you worry, Mr. Yates. I'll be gone first thing in the morning. Uh, well, what's everybody standing around like it's a funeral for? This is an old-timey celebration. Congratulations, Bert. <laughs> Must he dish up some of those wedding fiddles for Rowdy? Hey! Let's get some music going here! <laughs> heard what Mr. Yates said. This is supposed to be a celebration. I don't know, Lorraine. I think maybe we should have waited. What for, Bert? We're in love. That's all that matters. This ain't my dance. I'm making it mine. <laughs> I hope so, Lorraine. I hope so. Nice ride? Well, I sure had better. How's it look? Well, just like always. Out of you're in trouble. Yeah, well, looks like the last three days in the basin are gonna be long ones. Well, the only thing is, you ain't going to Bighorn. You're talking about that's the way Mr. Favor and I laid it out before he left. Did he uh, lay out the Cheyenne, too? Rowdy, I, I had a talk with the lieutenant at the fort. They've had six fights in the past ten days. The whole South Trail is just covered with our little red brothers. How do we get through? Well, the boys in blue claim we got to swing due north. North? Ah, that means we lose three or four days if we go that way. Well, might save your hair. What about water north? That's not good. But there's a creek on southeast of here, a few miles ahead. Could follow it for about two days. That is, if there's water in it. Yeah, if there ain't. If there ain't, it's going to get mighty thirsty. Come on, Marcia, get going. We haven't got all day. Well, yes, sir. Of all the ten-fingered, bird-brained, ox-toed... Mercy, pick that stuff up! <laughs> oh, Bert, I know I promised, but the thought of leaving you... It won't be for long. Just four days at the most. Then we'll be together again. On our own land. On our own land. Sounds like something at the end of a rainbow. It looks like it, too. Blue mountains and green grass. The prettiest little valley you ever saw. It's like a new world, Lorraine. The place where there's just today and tomorrow. And no yesterdays. There aren't any yesterdays for us, Bert. Our world started when you put this ring on my finger. Bert, there's been a little change of plan. We're going to be heading north. That'll leave you about 40, 50 miles from the basin when we get to the river. Well, once we get there, I guess I'll just drift my cows back on down the river. By yourself? 
I got no choice. Well, I want you to know. What about you, ma'am? Are you about ready to pull out? Yes, I'm due at the fort by noon. The uh, wagon master gave me till then before we started north. I wouldn't rush it, ma'am. The wagon train ain't going no place. Army's got the trail closed off. Cheyenne? Yeah, that's, uh, that's why we're changing and going north. Well, I'm going to need a little help cutting my 40 head out of the herd. Oh, they can go along with us, and you can take them from the river. I can't leave my wife here alone. There's someone she can stay with? No one. I'll start cutting out my beef. Well, wait a minute, Bert. You said you had to sell out, and you got everything you own in this here wagon. What are you going to do with the cattle? I'm not going to leave my wife here alone. It's all right. We'll manage. Sure we will. Thanks anyway, Rowdy. All right. All right, she can go along with us as far as the river, then you're on your own. But stay close to Wishbone, will you? Well, what are you looking at? I'm moving, I'm moving. When are you going to learn to make a decent cup of coffee? I didn't know it was going to turn out like this, Roddy. If I'd known she was going to... Wishbone, I want this wagon moving. Now. You know, he's not really as tough as he makes out to be. Mm-hmm. But like he said, get these wagons moving. That tailgate up. You got everything nailed down that rattles? Yes, sir. All right, you better get back with the herd and we'll take care of the missus. All right, thanks, Wish. Take a look here. All right. So you just stick close to me and everything will be all right. All right. Wish. Everything's going to be just wonderful. You didn't need to overdo it. Too easy, Rowdy. Well, don't try it then. At least till we get there. Hey, you know, a 44 comes in kind of handy on the trail. I don't use them. Suit yourself. You'll be riding drag, and uh, we got about 800 head of broken S cattle we had about a week ago. They're still not quite settled yet. It's Cliff Stanton's brand. That's right. Stanton's the kind of a man who expects us to handle his cattle real special. He's a man that expects too much. Sounds like you know Stan. I know him. All right, hit him up! Two-thirds a day chasing that son of Satan. 
Well, it's Stanton's, isn't he? Yeah, he just plain don't want to leave home. Well, keep an eye on him. If he takes off, he's liable to take half the herd with him. Well, that's no good lop-eared tick. Rudy, you better pass the word and take it easy on that water. I just had a good look at that bed ground I was figuring on for tonight. There's water there, ain't there? Yeah, some, but there sure ain't enough to water the whole herd out. From now on out, it gets worse. Did you tell the rest of them in that? Nope. I figured that was your job. Douglas? We're a little short of water tonight, so we're gonna hold them up and send the cattle in 20 at a time. So, uh, double up the night guard, will you? We mean double up the night guard. We start putting those critters through 20 head at a time, we're gonna all be working all night. We'll all be working all night. Start holding them back! Don't let them get to water all at once! How come the good Lord only gave you this oak to burn? It's all fired hard to cut. So you can work up an appetite. By the time I'm through cutting, I'm too tired to eat. Well, maybe that's the way the good Lord intended it. So the trail boss could save on his expenses. When I was young, I used to wait on my old master and hand his plate. And pass the bottle when he got dry And brush away the blue tail fly Jimmy crack corn and I don't care Jimmy crack corn and I don't care Jimmy crack corn and I don't care My master's gone away You know, she makes it sound like She really likes scrubbing clothes Well, that's them wedding bells, Jim Makes the world sit up on its beam end Everything seemed like rainbows and fiddle music, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever think about taking that long, big step? Me? Oh, uh, yeah, it, uh, it crossed my mind once or twice. How about you? Well, uh, you won't say anything. No, no, I'll take it to my grave. Well, uh, it happened up in Ellsworth, though. Three, four years back, I, I even got the ring. Paid 45 good, hard-earned iron men for it, too. And I got right up to the church, and that's when it happened. Yeah, what happened? Well, I, I tried to go one way, and well, my boots went the other. I fought them. I fought them real good, but, uh, well, they just took off with me in them. And I'll tell you, there's times when I can still hear this old yellow squalling. <laughs> my master's gone away. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. My master's gone away. Oh, wow, Mr. Stanton. You're about the last person I expected to see out of here. Well, I... Didn't think anyone would follow me this far. Not even you. After what you've done to me, I'd follow you no matter how far. Just what did I do? Chasing off after a man like you were afraid to face decent people. Bert and I are married. Sure. That's right, married. It still doesn't make any difference you're going home. I am home. I'm with my husband. Mind telling me what this is about? I'll tell you what it's all about. She's run off from home. She's my daughter. I'm sorry, Mr. Yates. I didn't think you had to know about any of this. I was your daughter, Papa, but now I'm Bert's wife. Not to me, you aren't. 
I won't have a daughter that's married to a man of that kind. Cliff, it's over and done with. Maybe you best forget about it. No, it's not over and done with. Not as long as there's a breath of air left in me. I'm leaving tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, and you're going with me. Oh? How, Papa? At the end of a rope? Because that's the only way you're going to get me home. That's up to you, young lady. One end of the rope or the other, you're going home. This isn't your brigade, Stanton. Lorraine isn't any backwoods soldier. She's my wife. As long as she wants to keep it that way, that's the way it's going to stay. For a man with a yellow streak down his back a yard wide, them was mighty big words. Why don't you get behind her? It's safer for you that way, Mr. Coward. She stays, Stanton. You're wrong, Mr. Coward. I'm taking her back. Unless you want to strap on a gun and try and stop me. Like there's going to be no gunplay around here. There's a cattle drive, not a private battlefield. Where's Favor? He's up in Denver. Then you're in charge. I want him off of this cattle drive, and I want him off now. Look, Stanton, you may own 800 head, but you ain't running this drive. Now, Harvey signed on to go up to Bighorn. That's where he's going. Now, you listen to me, Yates. You listen to me, Stanton. As far as I'm concerned, your daughter's legally married. Now, if you want to do something about that, you can... Either in a courthouse or behind a badge, you wait till you get to Bighorn. After the drive. Cliff, there's nothing you can do. Maybe, maybe not. Any objections if we ride along to Bighorn with you? No, there's no objections. You got that right. Just don't start any trouble that I'm going to have to finish, understand? <laughs> Known Cliff Stanton for 20 years. Once he makes up his mind, he never changes it. Miss Lorraine, I'm sorry. Reb, I'm not going back. You could tell him that for me. All right, Bert, get back there, Bert. And what I said about the trouble, that goes for both of you. Well, if there's any trouble, Rowdy, you'll have to start it. your breath, Reb. She's married, Cliff. You can't do anything about that. I can make her a widow. Yeah. Fine looking animal. Yeah, he should be. I raised him myself. <laughs> Right, we took his first step for him. That's real important, that first step. Almost as important as the second one, the one he takes on his own. That would depend upon uh, which direction that step takes him. I guess that'd be up to him, wouldn't it? You know, I might agree with you, Rowdy, except that uh, Cliff Stanton's a real single-minded person, and Miss Lorraine is the only thing he's got left. So it's just natural he'd want it to go his way. Rather than Bert Harvey's. Why? What's it got against him? When the war broke out, Cliff Stanton took a commission. He formed a brigade from our county, and Bert and his kid brother rode along with us. Did real fine, too, until we tried to take a hill at Gettysburg. We got through the artillery all right, and about halfway up the hill. But Bert's kid brother got killed. Something must have busted in Bert. Anyway, he ran. He ran clean out of the war. That wasn't enough. He came on back home. He tried to live with us. With what he'd done. Yeah, I could see that it'd take a little doing. Yeah. He took an awful beating. But he never fought back. Leastways, not with a gun. Miss Lorraine was the only one that stood up for him. Well, it's like I said. Cliff Stanton's a real single-minded person. Yeah, well, so am I. Especially when this herd's concerned. Owner or no owner, if Stan gives me any trouble, he's going to have to answer to the law. That's fine, Riley. Except then, it might be too late. Sure gives a man to crawl it. I know what you mean. You'll be steering that herd ready to run. The whole bunch quitter I was telling you about, 
Well, he's been on his feet all night just looking for a chance to run. Well, if he makes it, you better let him go. He gets caught up there in those brakes. We'll have a hard time chasing him out. There he goes. Keep an eye on the rest of them. on my head. The herd! Bring out the rest of the crew and try to turn them. Right ahead of men! your brand. Twenty head short, near as I could make it. Twenty head of mine. Well, that's too surprising. I mean, you got more cattle in the herd than anyone else. I want to know what you're going to do about it. Any sign? They headed back in those brakes. Take two or three days to get them out of there. Well, there's your answer. We can't spend two days around here without water. And I'm out twenty head of prime beef. Is that it? That isn't a bad percentage, Stan. Twenty out of eight hundred. You know, on a trail drive, there's a risk. I'm willing to take a risk any time, but I'm not going to stand by for a deliberate planned loss. You want to say that plainer? Yes, Mr. Coward, I'll say it plainer. If those had been your cattle, they'd never have gotten away, and that run would have never started. You wait a minute. I was with him when it happened. You got any reason for thinking somebody would purposely drive off 20 head of your cattle? When a man acts like a coyote, he starts to think like one. Be easy to double back and pick up that beef, wouldn't it, Mr. Coward? Bert, you don't have to take that from him just because he's my father. Don't turn your back because of me. It might be I'm not doing it for you. Put Harvey on flank. I did. He just didn't show up. He'll do what he's told or he'll get off this drive. Mm. Where's your husband? Well, I thought he was with the cattle. He's supposed to be, but I haven't seen him lately. Well, he went out early this morning, and when he didn't come back, I thought maybe you were still having trouble and you needed the extra help. Why? Is something wrong? No, that's all right. Harvey seems to be missing. You know anything about it? Didn't take him long to show his stripes, did he? I didn't do anything to him. 
didn't even have to. Well, you take two hours, I'll relieve the other half of the crew. He'll take two. Yates, how long do you expect to keep up this pace? Till we get to Waters, Tim. if he walked out on you a year from now? He didn't walk out. He'll be back. Lorraine, I've lived a lot of years. I've done a lot of things, some good and some bad. But always the meaning was in the right place where you were concerned. You believe that, don't you? Hmm? Yes. Then believe this. When your mother died, I promised her that you'd get better than you gave. Now, you're not going to get that with half a man. Father, you don't understand. It doesn't matter what Bert was or is. He's my husband. But Lorraine, he's no good. How can you say that? I know if a man runs once when the going isn't easy, he'll do it again. Maybe next time it'll be you instead of his brother that stays behind. Then that'll be my problem and not yours, Father. You know, when I married Bert, I knew you'd come after me. I knew just what it would be like. And you know what I dreaded the most? I dreaded the day that you would push Bert too far, because then we'd both find out what can happen to a man who just... who just can't run anymore. Now what? Well, it looks like somebody's trying to join up with us. I could only find 16 heads, Stanton. The cows are so important to you, I'll give you four of my own. What did you say about the color of the stripe down his back? Grandstand plays don't make a man. And neither does pushing a few head of cattle. I didn't see you pushing them in. Forget it, Cliff. He's on his chance. There hasn't been a chance for him, not for eight years. You don't know that. Not for sure. That's just it, Reb. Not knowing for sure. That's why I've got to spill a yell out of him so much that there won't be any doubt. Not for any of us. Cupid behind every tree. The ink still wet on my license, and I have to go looking for my husband. I'm sorry, Lorraine. 
And I had some thinking to do. Meaning two heads can't solve quicker than one? Not when there's no solution. Oh, Bert. Father doesn't make that much difference. Not if we don't let him. It's not him, Lorraine. It's me. Six white horses, a golden coach, and a 50-acre garden of Eden. <laughs> Big Horn is just a valley, Lorraine. A valley with water and grass and not much else. Maybe I made too much of it. Maybe we should have waited until you knew what you were getting into. You mean father is right? You know, you had me worried there for a minute. But Lorraine... Bert, it doesn't matter what's waiting for us in your valley. What matters is what we bring to it. You and I. And you know something? We've got our dream if we just open our eyes wide enough to see it. This is it. You and I together, this is our Garden of Eden. And nothing's ever going to change that. Not ever. You were right. Two heads can solve a problem faster than one. It comes in bunches. There ain't enough in that creek to water ten head, let alone three thousand. Beyond that? Well, the next three creeks are bone dry. Well, I guess that don't leave us much choice, but to head north to Alkali Sink, does it? Well, there's two. Let's head north and hope. Well, better go tell the men. <laughs> Can't put it any plainer than that. It's gonna get worse before it gets any better. We're gonna have to spend maybe three days and nights in the saddle. Well, a drive this long without water has been made before. We'll do it again. Heading north takes me further away from Bighorn. I might get you closer to water, though. Yeah, when we get to Alkali Sink, if there's water there, I'll spare a few of the men, help you take your cattle where you're going. And if there isn't any water at Alkali Sink? Well, then no other choice. We're just gonna have to keep moving north. Well, I'll have to leave you there, then. Quitting, Harvey? I promised my wife a home and a ranch on the Bighorn Basin. I intend to see that she gets it. Is that what you want? Stranded a hundred miles from where you're going with 40 head of cows? How you feeling? Tell you right, I feel like I've been to an all-night dance and everybody stepped on my toes. Yeah, well, a little saddle time will be just right for you then. Uh, gotta find some water. No, it's what I'm paid for. Wish you were much you get up to that spring. Fill everything you can find full of water, so we'll have enough for the horses. Anything else? Yeah, maybe if you know a prairie. Get started, Mush. You want to talk about it? What's there to talk about? Well, maybe you can fool some of them, but you can't fool me. There isn't any water up at Alkali Sink. You get some sort of a crystal ball or something? Well, I don't need a crystal ball. I've been on these drives long enough. I can feel bad trouble. Well, what do you want me to do? Just quit and let the cattle drop right here? Well, no. Just keep doing what you're doing. But sometimes it helps to talk about it.
breakfast. There's no other way, Roddy. Men had to have rest. Yeah, what good's it gonna do? No word from Quince. No idea how much further we're gonna have to go like this. Alkali Sink, see it right up ahead. All right. You're gonna find out in a little bit anyway. There ain't no water in Alkali Sink. Why did you have to lie about it? You said there was water there. I didn't say there was water there. I said if there isn't water there, we're going to cut straight through north. Quince is out there looking for a trail right now. Now get back in the saddles, everyone. I want this herd moving. You know, heading north takes me that much further away from Bighorn. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry about that, Bert. Well, I guess I won't be any closer to where I'm going than I am right now. I hate to ask it, but I could use a little help to cut my 40 head out of the herd. You gotta take 40 head across this country alone? He can try. We can both try. What are you trying to prove, Harvey? I ain't trying to prove anything, Stanton. Those 40 head and that bit of grass down at Bighorn are all Lorraine and I have. Man's got no choice, he plays the hand that's dealt him. All right, Harvey. You win. I've got $5,000 cash here. It's all yours. Take it, get on your horse and start riding. Don't stop. You can have a lot of good times on $5,000. Alone. You had your say, Stanton. I've had it. Now start running. You had to do that, didn't you, Father? You had to find a way to push me out of your life. Lorraine! Lorraine! Use that again, Cliff. You're gonna have to use it on me first. Back, Stanton, and you called him a coward? There's nothing else I can do. I had a reason. Maybe Bert had a reason at Gettysburg, too. But nobody took the time to ask him. I did. And I got my answer, but that just wasn't good enough for you, was it, Father? You couldn't just let us be. Bert, tell him, please. Let's get this over with. Is it that important to you? Not to me. To you. All right. All right, Stan. I had a reason. I killed my brother. We were halfway up the hill, at least those of us that got through the artillery. I fired and then I, I ducked behind this wall to reload. There was a yell. I shot before I really saw anything. He didn't say anything, he just looked at me and he died. I put my rifle down. I turned back. Because I couldn't kill again. Not for flag or country or not even for what you call honor. That's the way it was and that's the way it is. All right, Stanton, we got a herd to move. I'm not going to leave him there, are you? It's the way you want it, isn't it? The wish holder. Uh, there might not be any need for you. You mean he's dead? No, he ain't dead. Far from it. Here. Let me have a look. No, it's not too bad. Reb, some whiskey in my saddlebag. Get it, will you? You're just too darn stubborn to get out of the way of a prairie fire, aren't you? But he's just stubborn enough to make a darn good cattleman. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, Lorraine. I only wanted you to have the best. I guess you had it all the time, and I didn't realize it. Here, it's going to smart a little bit. 
here. And just hold that on there. And don't tell me you two are going to drive that herd to Bighorn by yourself, because Reb and me are throwing in with you just as soon as we get to water. Well, Mr. Rowdy, you had me scared there for a minute. I thought you were just going to leave him. I knew he wouldn't all along. Oh, yeah? What made you so sure? Because, like I told Mushy, you're not near as tough as you like to be. Yeah, well, tough enough to move these cows out, and you better be, too. I think this is some sort of a picnic. Get moving. Sure, come up sudden. I've seen freak storms, but nothing like this. Look, Wish, uh, I don't know if it's dry enough, but see if you can make up a fire and fill up some coffee. We'll feel like it. What's the damage? Just wet, mostly. Hey, what's your trouble? Well, I have seen some things in your favor. A strange man standing on the hill. It could have been a man. One of them disappeared right in front of us. All right, that's enough of that. Forget it. What's this all about? Oh, just seeing things bad enough. We're really in trouble. They started making it out to be a ghost. Mr. Favor. Sure, but I thought I saw your fire. Then, in the confusion of the storm, is something wrong? Where'd you come from? 
over there. A place called Homeville. That's 50 miles from here. <laughs> Correction, sir. It's three days, a dozen mountains, and one pair of good boots from here. <laughs> you walked the ways? Only since that uh, great beady-eyed monster I called good friend horse decided to part company with me and my wagon. And that on the open air side of a cliff. Whew. Aside from my neck, this was all that I managed to salvage. Who are you, anyway? My cob, by name, sir. My cob. Entrepreneur by profession. And foot loose and foot sore by choice. Where are you headed? Before that four-legged trader and I parted company, I was trying to get to a town called Sloan's Crossing. Well, that's another 50 miles from here. Yeah. And me with a pair of feet that just gave up walking. Perhaps I could drive along with you. Oh, well, sure, we can find room in the supply wagon for you. But only as far as the next town. Fair enough? He who's hungry never finds the bread hard. Eminently fair enough, sir. Why don't you get that fire started? Get another customer for stew. Yeah, well, if any of you Jasper's got any dry matches, mine got all soaked. You got some dry ones in the supply wagon, ain't you? Well, they got all dumped and wet on, Mr. Paver. It's a fine thing. Everything's soaked. It's gonna take me forever to build a fire. Uh, possibly I can help. Get some fine shavings, huh? I had no idea it would really work. On a trip, he said he made in that kind of condition. Why well, you should get him under some blankets? Uh, he just tuckered out. Nothing a little hot broth won't help. Somebody come help carry him over under the wagon. I just thought of something. Huh? That rain we had soaked down everything and everyone real good. Except him, he's bone dry. Hmm. Yeah, I thought so too. to dry out, and i like a chance to brew up some cherry elixir. Men are all gonna have colds after that wetting they got. Gotta have something for them. And what about that fella? What about him? Kind of a strange duck, isn't he? Not strange, dude. Just different. My cop. Sure is a queer name. Not as queer as some names I've come across. For instance, George Washington Wishbone. Well, what's on your mind? Nothing. Just that name keeps teasing around in my mind like I'd heard or seen it somewhere before, but can't just say when or how. You said a couple of things. Well, then, like how he come into camp last night, bone dry in spite of all that rain. Just like it had fallen all around him instead of on him. What are you getting at? Nothing. Just saying there's something mighty strange about a fellow like that. Not strange, Wish. Just different. I heard of a man like that one time. Yeah, where? Down in the nations. A couple of years ago. Only he called himself a uh, car. Cartiphilus, something like that. He was nothing but sore trouble, according to story I heard. What kind of trouble? Uh, bad trouble. Seemed like after this fella showed up, nothing ever went right and everything went wrong.
fixing to bore up some of that wild cherry election fence you wish for? Cartophilus. Beg your pardon? What happened to those books I picked up in Tascosa? Books? For reading, you idiot. I had a whole box of them. There's a supply wagon, Mr. Wishbone. Under that mule harness and sack of beans. Hope they didn't get wet. Adopted by the wanderer, Batudeus, Ahasuerus, and Mycob. Mycob the wanderer. Come oh, on, let's hustle with that canvas so we can get out of here. Mushy, come on, give him a hand. Yes, sir, Mr. Baker. Good morning. Ah, what a beautiful day. A storm brings such freshness to the world. Uh, Don't you feel that way, Mr. Fair? Cost me a half a day's travel and I'm missing some stock. It's hardly a blessing. That which is to be, must be. Philosophy ain't going to get my cattle back. You have to admit it eliminates fear of the future. Huh? Depends on where a man's going. You take uh, Sloan's Crossing, for instance. It's a trail town. As wide open as a place can get. Hardly a peddler's paradise. Especially a peddler with nothing to peddle. <laughs> with nothing to peddle. It's true that I've lost my stock. But you see, to a man of commerce, adversity is wedded to Dame Fortune. The turn of the wheel, so to speak. Today, disaster. Tomorrow, the end of the rainbow. Maybe in St. Louis or even Homeville, but not Sloan's Crossing. That's an open grave. You and I both know the only commerce a town like that understands begins and ends with a deck of cards and a stock of six-bit reservation firewater. Still, I must go there. What? A man with an itch instead of a sense of security ought to know a dead end when he sees one. Not an end, no, a beginning. Not for me. For a man whose life is at stake. What do you mean? A man is going to be hanged at Sloan's Crossing for a murder which he did not commit. I can prove that he's innocent. The man is John Slade. Slade? I know, I know, a notorious criminal. A half-breed, they tell me, damned by the very savages that he led. But still, he's a man unjustly accused. Oh, come on. He's not even human. What he and his pack did on the Pecos and the Red, not even the grave can cover up. Fred, the only justice he's ever going to see is at the end of a rope. For what he did before, perhaps you're right. But not in this case, not for this crime. On the very night, they say that he murdered a man in Sloan's Crossing. He occupied the hotel room next to mine at Homeville. He could not have possibly committed the murder. Slade's gonna have to balance up the books pretty soon. What difference does it make whether it's today or next week? The law is the difference. The law of the land that protects saints and sinners alike. That's up to you. I'm afraid when we get to the next town, you're gonna have to provide your own transportation. Sloan's Crossing is 30 miles out of our way. I may be late. That's your problem. You're riding the supply wagon with Mushy. I'm telling you untruth. Take it, I knew it. 
By the way you spread the words and sneak up on a fella, ever so easy and polite-like, I'd have believed every word of it if you just hadn't topped it off with the biggest swapper I ever heard of. Why, when you said this Hakem fella came from Africa 800 years ago, and he was educated, <laughs> well, you just gave the whole show away. <laughs> hey, look out! you trying to do? Oh, perhaps it was my fault. You see, I was talking to him as he was Wish, how did it happen? Now, how do I know? McGee. Well, Mr. Mike Cobb was telling me some funny stories of, about some folks he knew 800 years ago. 800 years? Wishbone. Well, noon here. Mr. Favor. Keep your stories to yourself after this, all right? And try not to confuse him any more than you have to, huh? Head scout the river. All right. And uh, I figure when we get up there, maybe we ought to lay over a few days. Let the uh, cattle get some fat on them, huh? Maybe. Maybe. Well, what do you think? Think about what? About what I'm talking about. Is there something the matter with you? I'm not something the matter with me. Well, you're sitting there like a gravestone, not listening to a thing I'm saying. Uh, something bothering you? This curiosity, the question marks always bother me. Mushy said something about uh, him saying uh, he knew some fellow who died 800 years ago. Well, Mushy gets things all confused. Yeah, well, probably so. Still, how did he walk through that rainstorm without getting wet? He was a line squally coming from behind him. No mystery about that. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. You ever hear the story of the Wanderer? No. The Wanderer. It's a legend. Seems when Jesus was being taken to be crucified, he stopped in front of a, a shoemaker's shop and asked, could he rest a little bit? And the shoemaker said, no, tarry not before my house, but go on. Then Jesus said, it is you who must go on while others know rest. You shall travel forever. What's that got to do with the uh, peddler? Well, one of the shoemaker's names was my cop. Wishbone. My cop's a name. It's as old as the Old Testament. Nothing legendary about it. It isn't just a name, it's the rest of it. Here, you read this. There's some stories about that legend in there. It says sometimes the wanderer brings good luck, but the others say that the wanderer was nothing but catastrophe married to disaster and committing bigamy with ruin. Well, we had nothing but bad luck since he showed up. Bad luck had nothing to do with that storm or the wagon breaking down. Two coincidences don't make a legend any more than old wives' tales and ghosts and goblins come true. Now, do you want to get packed, or do you want me to read you a couple of rhymes out of Mother Goose? I just had my say. All right. All right, now let's put her on. No, never mind. You stay here. It's all right. River crossing, Mr. Favor. Country's full of that stuff. Very luck, Spur. There's enough of it at this side of the river to kill half the herd. Couldn't keep them out of it. Uh, speaking of bad luck. Okay. 
And then there were two. It seems that for us, the wind doesn't blow and the cradle cannot rock. You always whittle yourself to sleep? Only when the bow is broken and the cradle needs repair, do you always read yourself to sleep? <laughs> eh, not always. Depends on the book. Take this one. Very interesting. Oh, legends old and new. The seven cities of Cibola, jade mines of Montezuma, lost city of Atlantis, and even the legend of the Wanderer. Oh, the man of many faces. Cartophilus, Potadius, Sahasuros, and Micah. You don't think... By me, legends and myths are exactly where they belong, between the covers of a book. But I'm afraid some of the men believe it. And if we have any more bad luck, the responsibility's gonna fall on you. That's what the people at Hart's Corner in New York said two years ago. An omen of death, they called me. Doomsday on the hoof. I guess I've presented you with quite a problem. What are you gonna do, dump me right here now? No, I wouldn't do that. For no other reason that uh, I'm running this drive, not superstition. I'll do like I told you, I'll take you along to the next settlement. Say, there uh, is something about the legend of the Wanderer, though, that piques my interest. I understand from the book he was a man driven by a sense of guilt. He was in torment, trying to make amends for an old injustice. Now, I can understand that man walking a hundred miles to save a renegade like John Slade, but... You question the integrity of an itinerant man of commerce. You sound like a cynic. I understand a cynic is a man who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. Unfortunately, at the moment, I happen to know both. Good night, my cub. Sleep well. Mushy, you're gonna let that water boil away. Now get it up here. and plenty of lard. I think we'll cut those sleeves enough. Mm. Get him something to sit on, somebody. Oh, I hope you know what you're doing. Wait, wait, let me get that first. Sit here, Mr. Wishbone. Chuck wagon. Now the only trouble is we'll have to pull somebody off the hood for the supply wagon. Perhaps I can help him, Mr. Favor. What do you know about driving a team? Well, I'm not an expert, but I can't follow the chuck wagon. Oh, we do need every man we can on the herd in this rough country ahead. All right, then. We should go on the supply wagon. How long do you figure it'll be, my cub, before he can use his arms? Oh, it'll be at least a week. A week? Why, you're out of your week of mushies cooking? Oh, we'll have a mutiny on our hands. Uh, I can cook. He can't do. Well, one thing for sure, can't be any worse than mushy cooking. A boss. Uh, Mr. Favor. Uh, Mr. Mushy, may I have the time, please? What, Mr. Micah? Oh, never mind, I'll get it. I don't wish. 
I'm all right, I guess. Everything's ready. Oh, uh, well, you know, of course, that my cub is uh, just filling in for you. Sure he is. I hope you all have good appetites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. need our energy. Okay. Out of the witch's cauldron comes the magic of son of a gun stew, Hebrew style. I'm not hungry. Come on, eat it. Come on. Like it or not, it's the only way to keep up your strength. Huh? Good. Is a traveling disaster. You just mark my word. Miss Favor, you know it's true. You know that man's a jinx. Crossing after all. Break a little bit early today, ain't you, huh? Just talking to boys. What's so important you have to stop working the head to talk it over? Mr. Favor, that peddler's a jinx. First it was a rain, then the wagon broke down. Then we run across that prairie of Larkspur. And now, we can't get across the river to break us because the river's up. And Mr. Favor, you know as well as I do, the river ain't usually up this time of year. Then there was a wishbone. Oh, you sure can't blame Mike up for what happened to Wishbone. I can. What made Mushy stumble when he was carrying that hot water was a doll. A doll that a peddler was carving on. Anything else? Yes, sir. We want you to get rid of him right now. Thinking it over very carefully, this is the way it stacks up. I run this drive, and what I say goes, and I say Mike up can stay with us until Sloan's crossing. Mr. Favor, you, you might find yourself mighty long on cows and mighty short on drovers if anything else happens.
Mr. Mussey, is there any more flour? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Mycup. Thank you. Time to sleep yet? When a man's tired. The clock hasn't got anything to do with it. Mr. Wishbone, what's wrong? Nothing. Why are you acting like this? You wouldn't understand. Man just isn't fit for nothing if he don't think he can do something real good. Right? I guess. Even if it's just one little old thing, he's got to believe he can do that better than anybody else. That's right, too. Guess so. I don't think that anymore. What do you mean? My cooking. What's the matter with your cooking? I used to think I was a pretty fair hand with a pot and a skillet. And better than most when it comes to doctrine. Then Mike Cobb showed me how wrong I was. You better start looking for a new boss, Mushy. Mr. Wishbone, this is talking pretty foolish. Oh, sir. I tasted his cooking. I just couldn't face the men again with that stew of mine. Well, the men are always grumbling about their food. Well, the men got a right to grumble on a long drive like this. I never paid them any mind because I knew I was good. And I don't know that anymore. I just don't know. You'll feel better when you get those bandages off, Mr. Wishbone. You'll see. Your flower, Mr. Mike Cup. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mushy. Thank you very much. Anything you want? No. There's something I don't want. You. You're bad luck. You're trouble, and I've had my fill. And no man could uh, run away from trouble no more than he can cut off his shadow and bury it. I can't peddle. All I gotta do is pack your gear and start you running. If you don't do it, I'll do it for you. No, not this way and not now. Maybe you don't hear so good. I said you're leaving tonight, right now. I leave when Mr. Favor tells me to and not before. Maybe I can change your mind. Get up, peddler. work to do. I said, get out! I said, get out! me to fight and I don't want to. You tell me to run and I can't. You call me Jinx and Jonas and then you close your mind to reason and truth. Now look at me. Look past superstition and fear 
and old tales of incantation and boiling pots and see me. I'm a man. I bleed. I rage. I laugh. I cry. I see. I feel. I even pray. But I'm still a myth. A denizen of the dark, a harbinger of disaster. And why? Because I've committed the crime of being different. Mountains are high and they're crooked and they're flat, but they're still mountains. And water is green and blue and white and it's still water. And I am still a man, just like you. I bring you no bad luck. I bring no disaster, and I certainly do not bring a myth to life that no man can do. Now I will leave. My cob. Aren't you forgetting something? Why, you let our stew cook too long, and you'll burn that pot midnight by. Me, I'm going to faint dead away. I don't get something to eat. Look, uh, you walk out on us now, and uh, we'll wind up eating steers out of our own herd. Come on and get it before we throw it out to the coyotes. All right, I'm going to dish it up. Cub joined the drive. One thing after another been pushing us towards Sloan Crossing. And now we're going that way. Thirty miles out of our way. But we're going that way. natural to a man with an uncontrollable itch. Moving. But why? There's no need now. What happened with the hunters? Did not have to happen, but it did. And what is more, I let it happen. I let another man's fury take the place of my reason, and that is the cardinal act of idiocy. So you're running away? Not running. Walking. Call it, uh, the better part of wisdom. Or perhaps uh, insurance against further trouble. You know, you can't run from trouble any more than you can run from a myth. Mr. Fader! Hunt! I started running. Uh -huh. I tried to turn him. Horse fell right in front of him. Just nothing we could do. Pretty good, I wish. Oh, not a thing. This is as bad as it can get. Please. I ought to be a doctor at Sloan's Crossing. There's nothing a doctor can do. Nothing anybody can do. There's always something someone can do, Mr. Wishbone. Even if it's only a word, there's always something.
you are. To help, nothing more. I'm going to die, ain't I? You're going to live. What? Thanks. I want to work with you. difficult hours ahead. Now, medicine won't help. Science can't. Only faith. That is all we can give him. Adler. I've been dreaming. Like when I was a kid. Feel like running forever. Racing all over the mountains. I ain't felt that way in a long time. What's it mean? It means that you're getting better. You wouldn't kid a fellow, would you? You get some rest. You stick around, you hear? Now you must rest. I will stick around. in a couple hours. Oh, no, no, Mr. Favre, not yet. Not yet? After the stink you made about getting to this town and traveling a hundred miles to save a man's life, and you say not yet? It's Hunt. I can't leave him until it's over. Well, the most he's got to live is a couple of hours at the outside. A man's last hours cannot be measured by the clock. What about Slade? Adler? A dying man's wish is sacred. I would be less than a man if I let him know. I can do only what I have to do when I must do it. No man can bend the hands of a clock any more than he can control his future. Adler. About that fight. I reckon I was scared of you. I'm sorry. It's a funny thing, ain't it? Now you're a real sight of comfort to me.
Still ought to make Sloan's crossing by sun up. Mike Cop. If you ever want to hire on as a permanent general, well, you got yourself a job. Thank you, Mr. Wishbone. Bye, Mr. Mike Cop. Bye, Mr. Mushy. Thank you very much. What do you want? Do you have a prisoner named John Slade? No, not anymore, ain't. Folks around here got a little impatient. Busted in last night, took him out and lynched him. And me, well, I guess I didn't put up much of an argument, Slade being what he was and all. You, uh, you wouldn't be friends of his, would you? Oh, no, no, uh, we just know of him. Thanks a lot. isn't it? I traveled all this distance, and it didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. Oh, I don't know, Mike Cub. Not at the hunt. I think it did to a few Callahans who got their fact and fantasy mixed up. I know it did to me. Well, where do you go from here? Wherever that strange little itch of mine takes me, I guess. As a matter of fact, this little metropolis looks like it could do with a bit of civilization. Welcome back in the drive, if you want. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs and cattle don't mix. My business is people. Even if their business begins and ends with a deck of cars and a stock of reservation fire water. Who knows, perhaps I'm even going to saloon keeping business. As a sideline, of course. Good luck, Micah. And to you, Mr. Favor. <laughs> <laughs> 